Hello and welcome to Diaspora Digital Media. Banditry destroying Northern Nigeria, its people and culture. My name is Ron Palm Jr. and this is the editorial. Banditry in Northern Nigeria represents a significant and complex challenge that undermines security, economic progress, and social harmony. It involves a range of criminal activities, including kidnapping for ransom, cattle rustling, and armed robbery, which have escalated in recent years. The impact on local communities is profound. It instills fear among residents, disrupts livelihoods, and hampers access to education and basic health care services. The economic cost is also considerable with agricultural activities particularly affected due to the risk of attacks in rural areas. This not only affects food security, but also contributes to the displacement of populations as people flee their homes in search of safety. Furthermore, banditry strains the resources of security forces and diverts attention from other pressing issues Addressing this problem requires a multifaceted approach that includes strengthening law enforcement, fostering economic opportunities, and promoting community engagement to restore peace and stability. Kidnapping now big business in Northern Nigeria. Kidnapping has become a significant concern in Northern Nigeria, evolving into a complex issue with deep social, economic, and security implications. The rise in such criminal activities can be attributed to various factors, including economic hardship, unemployment, and the proliferation of armed groups. These factors have created an environment where kidnapping for ransom has turned into a lucrative enterprise for criminals. The Nigerian government and international organizations are actively working on strategies to combat this menace, focusing on improving security measures, providing economic opportunities to dissuade potential kidnappers, and strengthening the legal framework to ensure swift justice for perpetrators. Now, with Nigerian citizens being among the most terrorized in the world, the BBC was one of the broadcasting organizations that invested time, resources, personnel, and took the risk of investigating the scourge up close and personal. Now watch this video closely. Authorities in Zamfara think there are as many as 30,000 bandits out here, split into around 100 heavily armed gangs. Ado Aliru commands one of those gangs. He is one of the most feared warlords in Zamfara. The police have put a bounty on his head of 5 million naira for his role in a recent massacre. Kuka <laughs> If the bandits of Zamfara want to hurt the government, they also want to make money. In early 2021, 
These two aims combined in an attack that copied the tactics of Boko Haram. Nearly 300 schoolgirls were abducted from the government-run high school in Jengebe. Among them were five girls from my own extended family. One house, Sonka Pokolosu, Sonka Serumas, and the Sierra Sonka Taru, Sonka Turam, Tanya Wabonga, Gahanya, Sonka Timaheta, one at the hair, son of a wind in the way, one at the hair, son of a wind in the way. Ni Aurum leader, who I come more than sooner. Noskia needed now just so. Kuman also in Timus of Gamma. A massing our one year she would yet to move wood at Daiki. Do there was a song of Quantana Gargashangaru Sunka she yet to see who took her hand with you. Say the song of it was. This is one of the bandits who led the attack on the girls. It took me five months to contact him and another four to persuade him to meet. I eventually met Abu Sani deep in the forest. It is common knowledge that no nation negotiates with terrorists to the extent of stooping as low as to pay ransoms for the release of hostages. As inhumane as this may sound, the reason is simple. Negotiation and paying ransoms makes terrorism a legitimate business. Once a business is legitimized, those who benefit from it have no reason to stop. Let's continue. Can I take you in the Sukkot Oka Yara Ajengi be a matter? Kore, can I take you? Yara no Kukot Oka, Mata no Kukot Oka. The redo the Tamani. Like a gammon in the leading desk of Kadoka and Martana. Muka Mukuma, the Kakata, you also case of tea. A Kavara two room and a jam in the Muki, Samoka to very good dam of Gumnati. In Tashi go on the Lamari Masala, I kiss some Mishes, Samoka, who then gave Muka and Makaran Tatun, the Sohana Mumu, which is Muzugida, Luli Mokata Matar, Muka Zumuka Doku and Makaran Tanjan Gay. She won Irmutunze Shiga. Naki, they are a matter of such a conche. Yet, of course, the Dere is a good must allow the age of the one. So, very much only Miss Ali won the killer she's a carpenter. That's an auntie, you don't kill a heat there. That I'm a cone, you go to the chair. You don't cacaro, and is I'm a cadibo. The Haka Daka, I did your magic chatter than the evening. To one the key road and the Haruka can buy the Adam. Ransoms have been paid by the Zamfara state government and the Nigerian government in this instance are living in denial. Mana Mona would woman attack a cayo, Mana Mona would woman attack a cayo, Monka Kaiti Hingi, Sunka Timorubuka. No one could book us, Sunka Kama Kabara, Sanatia, and Laha Akbar. I am Boko, Boko, Mumma Air Karatu, and Monka Tata, Sakaran Tanda. Yet she took Punga Bokunku, Batalana, to the ABC with a Punkaya. Monka to Sobadizam, what I was to do there was Sakaratu Haka. Muaraga and Mosukuma, Sunka Chibas, Suya, Karatum, Muku, a married whom I like better and Pani Mobile. Munka Namus, a do palm air baron Karatu. In ten years, in Atakawa Makaran, in Atakawa Makaran. Yet Chitwea shook my asha and wash into Uncle Kuma and the Makarante, Siak Adado. In northern Nigeria, kidnap for ransom has become a lucrative industry. A business that has helped to displace close to a million people in Zamfara alone. With the Jengebe schoolgirls still in captivity, Zamfara's government was forced to negotiate. To Kamanya, Baya Ang Anyi Maganganu, no Akabia, Kumi Akayaka Badayara. 
da mun ce za a ba mu miliyan 300 daga baya aka hada mu da wasu akai ta maganganu shine dai suka ba da miliyan 60 aka sake su aka suka bayar miliyan 60 suka bayar aka sake su miliyan 60 kaga miliyan 60 din da ido na mu muka karbo su to me kuka yi da wannan kudin mun karo bindigogi ne da su this bbc revelation is an indictment of the government of nigeria it makes it clear that the nigerian military is either not capable or not willing to stop the speed of banditry and terrorism in Nigeria once and for all. This explains why kidnappings, banditry, and other terrorist activities have been listed among the most lucrative businesses in Nigeria. Throughout the eight years of President Buhari's led administration, nothing was done concretely to stop it. The terrifying reality now is that it is continuing unabated under the Tinubu's government. Hundreds of Nigerians have been kidnapped, especially girls and school children. Thousands more have been massacred and ransoms are still being paid. And everybody knows this. Question is, is there no end to this diabolic criminality? So in the words of Osman Yusuf, we have no excuse. The vice president and the ministers of defense are from the north. Now, during an interview with Arise TV, Professor Usman Yusuf, former secretary of the CDS Action Committee on Hostages, commented on the seriousness and complex problem of banditry and kidnappings in northern Nigeria. He pointed out that many of the country's top leaders, including the vice president and the speaker of the house, are from the north, yet the problem persists. He calls on Northerners, particularly those in government, to take responsibility and work together to find a lasting solution. In his words, and I quote, We have a Vice President, number two, who is from the North. We have a Speaker from the North, number four. We have the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, who is from the North. We have the most senior military officers from the North. We have all ministers of defense from the north. We have minister of police who is from the north. We have the national security advisor who is from the north. President Bola Hamid Nubu will look at us and say, you guys have no excuse not to bring peace to your land. So it is up to us to look at ourselves in the mirror. We northerners, most especially those in government, must come in, lock the door, and see how we can bring peace to our lives. 15 years of Boko Haram, nine years of banditry, are we going to continue this forever? Now in conclusion, given the gravity of the situations highlighted, it is evident that urgent action is needed to address the perversive issue of banditry and kidnappings in northern Nigeria. It is imperative for the government, community leaders, and citizens to come together to implement comprehensive strategies aimed at enhancing security, fostering economic development, and promoting social cohesion. The creation of the state police should be expedited to concretely engage and include inhabitants and the locals, locals who have a better knowledge of their environments in the national security architecture. Only through collective efforts and decisive action can the cycle of violence and criminality be broken, paving way for a safer and more prosperous future for all Nigerians. Think about that. That wraps it on the editorial for today. I remain Ron Palm Jr. Thanks for watching.